In the realm of freeride motocross, planet Earth is an endless canvas. Pioneering minds pour heart and sweat into hours of painstaking labor to create that one perfect jump. Armed with nothing but their shovels and sheer will, they embrace Mother Nature's decadent landscape and the inherent opportunities that it presents. There is no length they won't go, no hill they won't climb. Yo. You playing with the transporter beam again? No, baby. No. Good, because you know we're not supposed to do that anymore. I know. Yeah, I know. What just happened? Holy fudge. Dude! What? That's the John Deere? It's a 450. Those are. <laughs> Actually, it turns out machines work way quicker than shovels, and free riders are just as lazy as the rest of us. But damn, they are bad mofos on a bike. We have everything you need. You'd think it would be easy to, to just build some jumps on some hills, but <laughs> it ended up being pretty difficult. Last year when we were in Caneville, the dirt there was just different. Like it was hard pack underneath pretty much, but now here we're finding different types of dirt in like three different spots. It's a little inconsistent and it's totally different to work with, but we're making it work. <laughs> That's that Chris Foster. I'm the calculated one. I'm like, hey, let's think about this a little. And he's like, ah, oh, look at it, eh? I'm just gonna go. <laughs> just gives a gas. Doesn't care where he ends up. <laughs> Ripping through the vineyards is a little sketchy at times. It's kind of, it's inconsistent. You're focusing straight ahead. You're not really looking at anything else because as soon as you get off of it, you got to correct. Let's go. OK. Well written in the stars, it's a great big lie that you never get to see until the minute that you die. Stretch 
punches. I gotta get these thunder thighs warmed up before we jump. Dog lodge, a coon of grapefruit time. Flutter your eyelids and honey, you'll be fine. Throw me your sins and I'll keep them with mine. You got a head full of stone and that's on the Get a little head or I'll swallow a fly. Call up your memories and hang them out the dry. It was a beautiful noise when I was tumbling by. Well, I was never here, there was never you or I. Chris and his mini flips, he's probably the best dude out there at them. I know some gnarly guys, and they're like, yeah, I hate doing mini flips. For some, the thrill of speed is the reason to swing a leg over a bike. There's a clarity to the world when it's rushing by on either side in a total blur. A day of work for Australian Toby Price means going over 100 miles per hour on a motorcycle. He's at the top of his field because he literally holds the throttle wide open more than anyone on the planet. Here we are in Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. Yeah, you come out here and you just get that sense of freedom. You, you hop on your bike and, and it's pretty much a rider's dream. Incredible trails, open speed highways. We hold it south and get out here and flap off the back of it. Yeah, my approach to life is probably a little bit different to a lot of people. With my racing, I've had really good times and I've also had a lot of bad times. And I think just from the bad times, it's made me approach things a little bit different. Time, you should never, ever trust my kind. 2013 just completely changed my life with uh, breaking my neck in three places. I don't remember the crash, I don't remember how it happened, what it was all about, but the doctors pretty much rushed in. We're like, you're pretty much on the edge of being in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. And uh, so I ended up breaking C6, 7, and T1 in my neck, which uh, that high up would have definitely changed my life completely. I'm a wild
At the moment now, I've got eight screws and three rods in my neck that literally just hold my head on. It's a pretty serious injury to, to uh, a lot of people probably would have packed up and walked away from any chosen sport that they're in um, at that point. But uh, look, like I say, I only get one chance at life and um, motorcycle racing is the only thing I know. Yeah, and the outback red centre of Australia, it's a crazy place. For anybody in the world, one to tick off a bucket list for sure is the Fink Desert Race. It just, it's fast, it's crazy racing, it's hard on man and machine. 230 kilometre race from Alice Springs south uh, to a little small community called Apatula. It's a feeling like no other going down that track at speeds 170, 80 kilometres an hour. There's one jump right at the finish line there nearly that uh, basically everyone lines that little piece and kids are excited. They're over in the moon that you're coming down. They, they hear you coming and they, they're jumping up the side of the fence. Just to see their smile on their faces just uh, makes you happy that you're there and, and putting on a show and having a great time with all the, all the people that are down there. Any chance that comes up with four-wheel racing, two-wheel racing, if it's there, I'll, I'll have a crack at it and give it 100%. I'm an Aussie all through and through. I get to travel the world doing something I love doing on a dirt bike, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I love Australia that much, and when my racing career is done and I'm in a wheelchair or a walking frame and full of arthritis and uh, from riding dirt bikes, I'm always going to come back to Australia and uh, see out my time here and be a menace here. track and trails we made it two hours later it'll be worth it i swear <laughs> you swear <laughs> do you promise <laughs> promise i've seen a lot of videos of this place though it looks really good it's like walking through the gates of disneyland right now Dude, did you bring your speedo? They got a beach. They have a beach? We made it. Let's do this. <laughs> Sold out stadium backer when I
Danger boy. Just in case you needed a reason to feel bad about how slow you are on a dirt bike. And let's make sure we're focusing on our turns. Focusing on our turns, we're looking ahead, we're being smooth in them, not coming in too fast when we come to a pause or a stop. Everything's momentum. I let Hayden train with guys like Ryan Hughes and, and other just other pros because he looks up to those guys. He enjoys that. He sees it as that's what Ryan Dungey does. That's what you know Roxon does. So I want to do it. Beat up, beat up. When I ride 
the pros, it's sometimes a little sketchy because they get like behind you and then they're going really fast and it makes you a little nervous. And then like it's pretty cool because you get to like watch them fly over the jumps when you're like behind them or something and it's um, pretty rad. Back in the day, I used to look at the mini dads and I, you know, I kind of laugh at some of the dads freaking out about it back in the day. And, and then next you know, I'm right in the game. I was like the full mini dad, and it used to, it's funny because I used to make fun of it so bad. And you gotta understand, like for an amateur kid to go race, like it's six figures, you know, for a kid on a mini bike to go to the nationals. At one point, I thought I'm just gonna get rid of all the ramps at the house, but I don't know, I don't think I need to do that. I think the point's clear here that we're racing. I think if we wanna go hit ramps, we'll go hit ramps. If he wants to backflip a dirt bike, cool, let's backflip dirt bikes today. I don't care, like, let's be good at a lot of things, you know, I think that's cool. Paradise. It's a concept sometimes as simple as holding the throttle to the stop and tossing it sideways on a 120-footer.
It's mind-blowing the possibilities when mixing huge dunes, some paddle tires, and a bunch of sickos whose survival instinct is replaced with the desire to go ridiculously huge.
There is nothing more regrettable in life than missed opportunity. When the ground is covered in snow for over six months of the year, riders will adapt. snow, pow in your face, soft landings, epic turns, all that is just so much fun. You know, it can get a little harder to get around, but that's half the adventure. You know, it's a lot of times where we're semi-unplanned and just having the time of our lives. There are a lot of different dangers in the backcountry, and if you plan on just riding the train like a dirt biker and not understanding that there could be avalanches and stuff like that, you're putting yourself in harm's way. So being prepared with avi bags and beacons and probes and shovels to be out here riding these trains are key. Ensenada, Baja, California. The Western Hemisphere's off-road mecca. A place Ivan Ramirez calls home. Here, off-road is king. Wide open possibilities are best tackled with wide open throttle. I feel the hot wind on my shoulder and the touch of a world
I get to travel around the world racing my dirt bike, but Baja is what I call home. Mexico. At two years old, Tim Geyser rode his first dirt bike. It would have been absurd to expect that just 17 years later, he'd be eyeing an MXGP World Championship. It's funny how these things work out. We was not rich family, you know. I was racing with the old bikes, and we came from little Slovenia and um, win the races. All the family was in motocross, you know. We just worked for the motocross. You know, in 2014, when we signed with Honda, you know, uh, then we know that everything on the end, you know, like many years after, you know, all that sacrifices and everything what my dad have to do and uh, what my family goes through, on the end, you know, like uh, everything pays off.
last year the dreams came true, but okay, it was in a MX2 class. Now, one year later, you know, like as a rookie coming into the premier class, like it's, it's, it's unbelievable. For that, we are working all the life, you know? Dirt bike riders want a chance to explore the earth as we see it, ripe with opportunity. The Gold Creek Lodge in northern Idaho is surrounded by endless single track with any toy imaginable and no one around to say no. The boys all finished? Yeah, great. Yeah. Delicious. Where are we going today, Kevin? Top of the mountain. Oh, yeah. in the middle of the Idaho wilderness. Big, beautiful meadows, endless forests, trees down everywhere. It's kind of an off-roader's paradise. dirt bikes. That's why I'm here. I'm here because I love it. I've done it all. I like to do it all. And it's really all just about motoing and riding. That's it.
Holy shit, this is gonna be scary. You nervous? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> Growing up riding trials, it's kind of a somewhat natural maneuver for me, but you know, you come at it and pull the clutch in and compress the suspension and just hold it to the stop, unweight and hope for the best. Hope that front end gets up. I mean, there's a reason why they call it a splatter. I love riding with Cody. He just got second at Erzberg. Like, he's a freak. It's really fun to ride with him until you find yourself in, like, a boulder pile that you're like, I can't go through this. And he just is like, do, 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 do. Like, it's nothing. Professional motocross is a trade that takes riders all over the globe. There's nothing like seeing the world to make a man appreciate the feeling of coming home.
back home to the Central Coast, it feels good just to kind of refresh myself and clear my mind. You kind of get into a pace and a routine every single day, but for me, it's good to come home and get back to where I started. Jesse Nelson has traveled countless miles. He has reveled in the spoils of pure victory, even after moments of pure adversity. Still, he returns to the tracks that shaped him, to the sand that eroded weakness during his formative years as a racer. Like that sand, Jesse Nelson has true grit. That's why he is, and always will be, a champion. the way the earth rotates, maybe. That's really gross. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Well, that's awesome. Woohoo! Show, you, show Cody how it's done. 2017 Erzberg champ podium guy, Kevin Rookstool. No problem. How'd you learn? Man Camp 2016. We got it. <laughs> Sweet bike for this. This sucks following. What are we doing here? Uh, Just shooting some skeet. Yeah. Skate? What are you doing? Very many. I've been skeeters, not skeet. All right. Even weapons are so tiny. They would never stand a chance in an intergalactic war. Branch. Branch. Oh. Oh. You can't even throw it. Yeah, they'd be the first to die. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> oh my God, I almost sorry. lost you're it. You're really good at balancing, but you're not very good at flinging or throwing or much else. <laughs> Really so fast. He could even get over that little log. Okay, what mouse walks on two legs? You don't know any any mice that walk on two legs? Mouse, famous mouse, maybe? Oh, make you a Yeah. What duck walks on two legs? Donald Duck. <laughs> All ducks, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. 
I wonder where this is coming out on Netflix. It's really bad at doing this dirt bike thing. They should have got someone else. Someone could stay on two wheels. I could jump twice as far and go three times higher. Me too, I could go like four times higher. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was rad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Show me all the different positions you wanna, we're contemplating. This one's a good one. Leg up. Yeah. That one would be easy to capture. He's going surprisingly fast. I'm kind of impressed. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, silly humans. Pretty crazy perspective. It looks like it's gonna crash. This is for the kids out there. This is the lady killer joke. <laughs> Why can't you hear a pterodactyl in the bathroom? Because they got a silent pee. I don't get it. You gotta think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. That was pretty funny. That's a nerd joke. <laughs> So what did you think? I think better. 